The sky was an iron gray canvas smeared with ominous streaks of dusk as Jonathan decided to take the shortcut. The road ahead was known to locals as Whispering Pines Road, a place laden with folklore, tales of spirits, and inexplicable occurrences. But Jonathan was not the kind to be swayed by mere superstition. With a long drive ahead and daylight fading, he tightened his grip on the wheel and turned onto the deserted forest road. The forest was dense, its canopy so thick that it blocked out the waning light, plunging the path into a premature darkness. As Jonathan drove deeper into the woods, a prickling sensation crept up his spine. The trees around him stood eerily still, as though holding their breath. The wind was absent, yet the air felt alive, whispering secrets he couldn't quite discern. His heartbeat quickened. Minutes turned to hours as he drove, the trees on either side becoming a blur. Then, out of nowhere, a chill slithered through the car, fogging up the windows for a heartbeat. He shivered and cranked up the heater, frowning. Weird, he muttered, wiping at the fog. That's when he noticed it. A tree ahead, larger than the others, gnarled and twisted as though in pain. Its bark was scarred with deep, unnatural grooves, almost resembling claw marks. Jonathan glanced at the tree as he passed it, and in that split second, he felt it. A presence, an icy claw, gripped his heart, squeezing it, sending a jolt of panic through his veins. He jerked the wheel reflexively, narrowly avoiding veering off the road. His heart pounded furiously, adrenaline flooding his senses. He checked the rearview mirror, expecting to see nothing but darkness. But there she was. A woman stood at the base of the tree, her form cloaked in shadows. Her eyes glowed faintly, piercing through the mirror like twin orbs of death. Jonathan's mouth went dry. He blinked and she was gone. Get a grip, he muttered, trying to shake off the terror gripping him. But his heart betrayed him, hammering against his ribs as if trying to escape. He sped up, eyes darting to the road, the forest, the mirror. His mind raced with thoughts, an overactive imagination, a trick of the fading light. Just as he began to calm down, the car lurched violently to the side. He cursed, wrenching the wheel back, fighting to keep control. The tires squealed in protest, and for a gut-wrenching moment, he thought he was going to crash. But he managed to steer back onto the road, his pulse throbbing in his temples. It was then that he realized he was still accelerating. The car was picking up speed on its own. No, no, no. He stomped on the brakes, but the pedal sank uselessly to the floor. The speedometer needle climbed, the forest blurring past like a nightmarish carousel. Jonathan's breath came in ragged gasps as panic gripped him. He yanked the emergency brake, and the car screeched, skidding sideways. The tree loomed ahead once more. Jonathan's blood turned to ice as the woman materialized on the road directly in his path. Her long, dark hair hung limp around her pale face, her eyes wide and hollow. She raised a hand, her lips moving soundlessly as if whispering a curse. Jonathan screamed, jerking the wheel to avoid her. The car veered sharply, tires losing grip on the slick, leaf-covered road. For an agonizing moment, time stretched as he felt the car lift, teetering on the brink of disaster. Then gravity took over, and the vehicle smashed into a ditch, tumbling violently before coming to a shuddering halt. Silence. Silence. Jonathan gasped for air, his body trembling, pain radiated through his limbs, his head pounding from the impact. He groaned, fumbling for the seatbelt, his movements sluggish. The windshield was cracked, spiderwebbed with fractures, yet he was alive. With a grunt, he pushed the door open and crawled out, collapsing onto the forest floor. He lay there, staring up at the sky, gasping, trying to make sense of what had happened. His thoughts raced, jumbled, disoriented. He turned his head toward the road. The tree stood there, ominous and unyielding. But the woman was gone. Was she ever there? Had he imagined it all? Shaquille, he got to his feet, wiping blood from a cut on his forehead. His car was a wreck, one wheel jutting at an odd angle, steam hissing from the crumpled hood. He cursed under his breath, scanning the road for any sign of help, but it was as deserted as before. Then, faintly, he heard it. A whisper. A soft, ghostly murmur that seemed to come from all around him. He spun around, his eyes wild, searching the shadows between the trees. The whisper grew louder, more insistent, like a chant filling his mind with a cold dread. His heart pounded against his ribs, sweat chilling his skin. And then he saw her again. She stood behind the tree, half hidden by its trunk. Her eyes met his, hollow yet burning with an unspeakable malice. She smiled, her lips curling into a predatory grin, and Jonathan felt his blood run cold. 
A scream lodged in his throat as he stumbled back toward the car, slamming the door shut, his hands fumbling with the ignition. The engine sputtered, coughed, and died. His breath came in ragged bursts as he glanced up, hands trembling on the wheel. She was closer now, standing just beyond the hood, her eyes locked onto his. Jonathan closed his eyes, gripping the wheel so hard his knuckles turned white, muttering prayers under his breath. When he dared to look again, she was gone. But the road ahead was not the same. Jonathan's chest heaved as he opened his eyes. The air inside the car was stifling, thick with fear and the smell of gasoline. His fingers trembled against the wheel as he looked around. The road ahead stretched into the forest, darker than before, as if the trees had closed in, tightening their grip on the pathway. The car, still motionless, creaked softly, the metal settling into its twisted form. He had to move. Sitting here in this claustrophobic bubble of fear would only make things worse. Forcing himself to breathe slowly, Jonathan reached for his phone, praying for a signal. His heart sank as the screen displayed no service. Figures, he muttered, tossing the phone onto the passenger seat. His only option was to walk, find help, or at least put some distance between himself and that tree. Gathering his courage, he opened the car door and stepped out into the oppressive darkness. The forest was deathly silent, not even a rustle of leaves or the chirp of crickets. It was unnatural, a quiet that pressed down on him, thick and smothering. The chill in the air raised goosebumps on his skin as he limped away from the wreckage, his eyes darting to every shadow. He glanced back at the tree. It stood there, a sentinel of dread, its twisted branches clawing at the sky. The spot where the woman had stood was empty now, but he couldn't shake the feeling that she was watching him, lurking just beyond his sight. His heart hammered against his ribcage, his instincts screaming at him to run. But where? The road stretched ahead, winding through the forest like a snake. As he walked, Jonathan kept glancing over his shoulder, expecting her to appear at any moment. His footfalls echoed unnervingly in the silence, each step reverberating through the trees. The forest seemed to close in around him, so the shadows deepening, shapes moving just out of the corner of his eye. Then, a sound. It started as a faint rustling, growing louder, more frantic, like dry leaves scraping against each other in a fierce wind. Jonathan froze, his pulse quickening. The sound circled him, coming from everywhere and nowhere at once. His breath caught in his throat as he spun around, searching for the source. Who's there? He called out, his voice cracking with fear. Silence. His skin prickled as the sound stopped abruptly, leaving the air heavy with tension. He strained his ears, holding his breath, the silence now more terrifying than the noise had been. He took a cautious step forward, his eyes scanning the darkness ahead, and that's when he heard it. A whisper. It was faint at first, like a breeze caressing the leaves, but it grew steadily louder, clearer. A woman's voice, soft and chilling, echoing through the trees. Jonathan. He stumbled back, eyes wide, his heart pounding in his ears. No, he gasped, shaking his head. This can't be happening. He looked around frantically, trying to pinpoint the source of the voice, but it seemed to come from everywhere, surrounding him, suffocating him. Jonathan? The voice was closer now, almost inside his head. A shiver ran down his spine, his breath coming in shallow gasps. His feet moved on their own, stumbling forward along the road. He had to get away, had to find some semblance of safety, but the forest seemed to stretch endlessly around him, a labyrinth of shadows. The rustling returned, louder this time, like dry fingers scraping against bark. Jonathan's legs burned as he broke into a limping run, his gaze locked on the winding road ahead. It felt like a nightmare, his legs heavy, his lungs screaming for air, but he couldn't stop. Not while that voice was pursuing him, whispering his name with each step. Suddenly, he skidded to a halt, his heart nearly stopping in his chest. The tree stood before him again, his mind reeled in horror. He had been running away. Hadn't he? How could he have circled back to the same spot? The tree loomed, its branches twisting like skeletal hands against the sky, the scars on its bark seeming to pulse in the dim light. And then she appeared. She stepped out from behind the tree, her movements fluid, unnatural. Her eyes glowed faintly, burning holes into his soul. Jonathan staggered back, tripping over his own feet, landing hard on the ground, Pain shot up his spine, but it was nothing compared to the cold dread seizing his heart. She stood there, watching him, her face expressionless, yet filled with an overwhelming malice. Why? He croaked, his voice barely a whisper. What do you want? 
Her mouth moved, the words forming silently at first, but then they struck him like icy daggers. You? Jonathan scrambled to his feet, his mind screaming for him to run, but his body felt rooted to the spot. The woman began to advance, her steps slow and deliberate, her eyes never leaving his. He stumbled backward, his hand brushing against something cold and rough. He turned his head and felt his blood run cold. It was another tree, identical to the one she'd appeared by. No, he gasped, his breath hitching as he glanced around. The forest was changing, the road warping, twisting in on itself. Trees appeared where none had been before, lining the path with silent sentinels, each one scarred in the same manner. Jonathan turned to run, but his path was blocked. She was there, ahead of him now, her pale face framed by the encroaching darkness. Panic surged through him, and he lunged to the side, crashing through the underbrush, ignoring the branches that scratched and tore at his skin. He had to escape, had to get away from this nightmare. But no matter where he turned, she was always there, waiting. Finally, he stumbled out into a clearing, his chest heaving, his vision blurring from exhaustion. He fell to his knees, gasping for breath, his mind a whirl of fear and confusion. As he looked up, he realized with a sinking horror that he was back on the road, and the tree loomed before him once more. Jonathan's body trembled as he forced himself to stand, his legs quaking beneath him. He was trapped, the forest around him closing in, the air thick with an oppressive presence. The woman stood by the tree, her head tilted slightly as she watched him, a cold smile playing on her lips. He staggered forward, his heart racing, his mind screaming that this was a dream, a hallucination. But every step felt real, the ground solid beneath his feet, the cold biting into his skin. He approached the tree, drawn to it against his will, his hands reaching out to touch its rough surface. And as his fingers brushed the bark, a wave of pain surged through him, blinding and all-consuming. Jonathan collapsed to the ground, clutching his chest as the searing pain coursed through his body. It felt as if something had reached inside him, squeezing his heart with icy claws. He gasped, his vision blurring with tears, but his mind remained fixed on one terrifying reality. He was trapped, caught in a loop with no clear way out. The air around him grew thick, suffocating, filled with a musty scent of rotten decay. He groaned, forcing himself to stand despite the agony ripping through him. The woman had vanished again, but he knew she was lurking, watching, waiting for the right moment to strike. I have to get out of here, he panted, glancing around the dark forest. The road lay before him, shrouded in mist, twisting away into the darkness. The urge to flee surged within him, to run and never look back. But which way? Each direction looked identical, every path lined with the same gnarled trees that haunted his every move. Jonathan's heart pounded in his chest, a frantic rhythm that echoed in his ears. He stumbled forward, deciding to follow the road once more. It was the only path, no matter how treacherous it seemed. With each step, he glanced over his shoulder, half expecting to see her emerge from the shadows again. The forest around him remained unnervingly quiet, its silence an ominous reminder of the danger lurking within. Time seemed to stretch and warp as he walked. Minutes felt like hours, the road extending endlessly before him. He quickened his pace, hoping to reach the highway or at least find some sign of civilization. His feet ached, his muscles burned, but he pushed on, driven by the sheer terror of being caught in this nightmare. Then, just as hope began to flicker within him, he noticed something ahead. It was the tree the same twisted, scarred trunk that had haunted him since this ordeal began. His heart skipped a beat, cold dread washing over him. No, 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 he muttered, stumbling backward, his eyes wide with disbelief. It was impossible. He had walked for what felt like miles, yet here it was again, standing right in his path, mocking his every attempt at escape. As he backed away, his gaze darted to the forest around him. The trees seemed to shift and bend, their branches rustling without a breeze. Shadows moved at the edges of his vision, flickering in and out like distant memories. He blinked, feeling a nauseating twist in his gut as reality itself seemed to bend around him. Am I losing my mind? He whispered, his voice barely audible in the still air. Panic surged, threatening to consume him. He had to try something different, break this maddening cycle before it drove him insane. Desperation clawed at his thoughts as he scanned the forest, searching for any alternative route any path that might lead him away from this cursed road. Without further hesitation, he plunged into the undergrowth, 
branches whipping against his face and arms as he forced his way through the dense foliage. The forest resisted him, vines tangling around his ankles, thorns scratching his skin. But he pressed on, ignoring the pain, his mind fixed on one thought, escape. The deeper he went, the darker the forest became. It was as if he were descending into the belly of some ancient beast, its depths filled with unseen horrors. He stumbled over roots and rocks, his breathing ragged and sharp, yet he refused to slow down. Behind him, he could feel her presence, cold and relentless, chasing him through the trees. After what felt like an eternity, Jonathan broke through the foliage and into another clearing. He collapsed onto the forest floor, gasping for breath, his body trembling with exhaustion. For a moment, he lay there, eyes closed, waiting for the inevitable, the sight of the tree, the whisper of her voice. But nothing came, only the rustling of leaves and the distant call of some nocturnal creature. Slowly, he opened his eyes, hope tentatively blooming in his chest. The clearing was different, its shape irregular, surrounded by unfamiliar trees. He had made it. He had found another place, a way out of the cursed loop. Relief washed over him, and he managed a shaky smile. I did it, he whispered. I'm out. He rose to his feet, his legs weak, but his spirit buoyed by this small victory. He scanned the clearing, searching for a direction to continue his escape. It was then that he noticed something strange. In the center of the clearing stood a solitary rock, half buried in the earth. On its surface was a series of symbols etched deep into the stone, glowing faintly in the moonlight. Curiosity tugged at him, overriding the fear gnawing at the back of his mind. He approached the rock, reaching out to touch the carvings. As his fingers brushed the surface, a shockwave of cold surged through his arm, freezing his veins. He yanked his hand back, stumbling away, his eyes wide with horror. The air around him grew heavy, oppressive, pressing down on him like an invisible weight. He turned to flee, but stopped in his tracks as the forest around the clearing shifted, twisting into a nightmarish tableau. The trees stretched and bent, their trunks warping into grotesque shapes. The shadows lengthened, crawling toward him with a life of their own. From the darkness at the clearing's edge, she emerged. Jonathan's blood turned to ice. The woman stood there, her form shrouded in mist, her eyes glowing with a terrible, unnatural light. She raised her hand, and the air around him vibrated with a low hum, filling his mind with a disorienting static. He clutched his head, falling to his knees, the pain slicing through his skull like a knife. No, please, he gasped, his voice choked with fear. But she said nothing, her gaze fixed on him, her expression unreadable. The shadows crept closer, engulfing the clearing, swallowing the last remnants of light. Jonathan's vision dimmed, the world around him dissolving into a swirling darkness. And then, just as quickly as it had begun, the pain ceased. He blinked, struggling to clear his head, his body still trembling. Slowly, the shadows receded, the forest reasserting itself around him. He found himself back on the road, the trees looming above, their branches swaying gently in a non-existent breeze. In front of him stood the tree, its twisted form as menacing as ever. No, he whispered, his voice breaking. He had escaped, hadn't he? He had found a way out. Yet here he was, right back where he started, the nightmare repeating itself. His knees buckled, and he sank to the ground, tears stinging his eyes. Why? Why are you doing this to me? From the darkness, the whisper returned, her voice drifting through the air like a chilling breeze. You can never leave. A sob escaped his lips as he covered his face with his hands, despair crushing him under its weight. The road ahead remained unchanged, the forest around him still waiting for his next futile attempt at escape. Jonathan sat on the road, his hands pressed to his face, his body trembling as the realization of his hopelessness set in. The forest loomed around him, quiet and still, yet filled with an oppressive presence. The woman's whisper echoed in his mind, taunting him with its dreadful promise, you can never leave. His breaths came in shallow gasps, his thoughts swirling in a chaotic storm of fear and confusion. He had tried running, had pushed his body to its limits, but it was all for nothing. The road, the tree, the woman, they were all part of some twisted game, a maze with no exit. But he couldn't just give up. There had to be a way out. He wiped the tears from his eyes and forced himself to stand, feeling a cold resolve settle over him. All right, he muttered under his breath, casting a wary glance around the darkened forest. If I can't escape you, then maybe I need to face you. 
His voice wavered, betraying the fear still clutching at his heart. But he knew he had to try something different. Running hadn't worked. Perhaps confronting whatever was haunting him might break the cycle. He took a deep breath, steadying himself, and approached the twisted tree at the center of the road. The scars on its bark seemed to glow faintly, as though alive with some dark energy. He felt a chill creep up his spine, but he pushed it aside, reaching out a tentative hand toward the trunk. His fingers grazed the rough surface, and immediately the air around him turned frigid, the temperature dropping sharply. Jonathan shivered, pulling his hand back. The tree pulsed with an unnatural energy, radiating an aura of malevolence that made his skin crawl. He swallowed hard, his gaze darting to the shadows between the trees. I know you're here, he called out, his voice trembling slightly. Show yourself. For a moment, nothing happened. The forest remained still, the silence pressing in on him. Then, slowly, the shadows began to move. They shifted and twisted, coalescing into a form that emerged from the darkness like a wraith. The woman stepped forward, her pale face partially hidden by her tangled dark hair. Her eyes glowed with a haunting light, locking onto his with a gaze that sent a jolt of terror through his body. You think you understand this place? She hissed, her voice carrying the weight of ages. It was no longer the soft whisper he had heard before. It was harsher, filled with an ancient, icy fury. Jonathan felt his mouth go dry, but he forced himself to stand his ground, refusing to back away. Who are you? He demanded, trying to keep his voice steady. What do you want from me? She tilted her head slightly, her lips curling into a faint, twisted smile. You took the wrong path, she said, her tone almost mocking. Now you belong to the forest. That's not an answer. Jonathan shot back, frustration flaring within him. I'm not just going to sit here and let you, let this place kill me. There has to be a way out. He glanced around, searching the forest for some clue, some sign that he could use to break free. The woman's eyes narrowed, and the shadows around them seemed to ripple, responding to her anger. There is no way out, she replied, her voice cold and final. Not for you. You chose this road, and now you are trapped in its curse. Jonathan's heart sank, but he clung to a sliver of hope. There had to be something, some reason she kept appearing, kept tormenting him. You keep showing up near this tree, he said, gesturing to the twisted trunk. Why? What is this place to you? For the first time, her expression faltered. A flicker of pain crossed her features, quickly replaced by an icy mask. This tree is my prison, she spat, her voice tinged with bitterness. I was bound here long ago, condemned to wander this road and torment those foolish enough to trespass. Her words sent a chill through Jonathan. A prison, bound to the tree. The pieces of a story be deformed in his mind. So you're trapped here too, he said slowly, his gaze locked onto hers. Who did this to you? The woman's eyes blazed and the shadows around them swirled like a violent storm. A mistake, just like you, she replied, her voice dripping with venom. I trusted someone and they betrayed me. Now I am cursed to remain here, bound to this road for eternity. Jonathan felt a pang of sympathy amid his fear. She was a victim, just as he was now. But that also meant there might be a way to break the curse, if he could understand it. What if we broke the curse, he asked cautiously, watching her reaction. What if I helped you get free? She laughed, a harsh, hollow sound that sent shivers down his spine. You? She sneered. You cannot break what you do not understand. This curse is older than you can imagine, woven into the very fabric of this forest. It feeds on despair, on fear. There is no escape. But what if? Jonathan started, but she cut him off, her form shifting, growing darker, more menacing. Enough, she roared, her voice reverberating through the forest like a thunderclap. The ground beneath Jonathan's feet trembled, and he stumbled, barely managing to stay upright. The shadows surged toward him, and he braced himself, expecting to be engulfed in darkness. Instead, they stopped short, swirling around him like a whirlpool. The woman stepped closer, her eyes blazing. You wish to challenge the forest? She hissed. Very well. Let us see how long you can survive its wrath. Before Jonathan could react, the shadows enveloped him, twisting and pulling at his limbs. He felt himself being lifted, spun around, the world dissolving into a blur of darkness and light. He cried out, struggling against the force, dragging him deeper into the forest's embrace. Then, with a jarring thud, he was thrown to the ground. He lay there, gasping for breath, his vision swimming. Slowly, he pushed himself up, wincing as pain shot through his arms and legs. He looked around and felt a sickening lurch in his stomach. 
He was back on the road, staring at the tree. No, he yelled, pounding the ground with his fists. This isn't real. I was so close. The woman stood nearby, watching him with a mixture of pity and scorn. You wanted to face the forest to break the curse, she said calmly. Now you will experience the depths of its torment. Jonathan's head swam with confusion and terror. The forest was playing with him, twisting his mind, warping reality around him. But through the haze of fear, a spark of defiance flared. He couldn't let this be the end. If he was trapped in this game, then he would find a way to win. He climbed to his feet, staring down the woman. Then let's play, he growled, because I'm not giving up. Her eyes gleamed with a dark amusement as the shadows around them thickened. Very well, she whispered. The game has only just begun. Jonathan's resolve hardened as he faced the woman, his eyes locking onto hers. The forest around him seemed to react, its oppressive atmosphere becoming heavier, pressing down on him like a weight. He could sense the darkness closing in, eager to swallow him whole, but he refused to yield. If this was a game, then he needed to learn the rules to understand what he was up against. The woman remained motionless, her eyes gleaming with an unnatural light as she observed him. You're persistent, she remarked, her voice echoing through the silent woods. Most who come here give in to despair far sooner, yet you still stand, defiant. Jonathan clenched his fists, a wave of determination washing over him. I'm not going to be your victim, he replied through gritted teeth. If there's a way to break this curse, I'll find it. She tilted her head slightly, a faint smile curving her lips. You misunderstand, she said softly, her tone almost pitying. This is not a test you can simply pass. The forest is, is alive, a force that feeds on fear and hopelessness. It traps those who wander too far, binding them to its will. Then I'll fight it, Jonathan shot back, his voice growing louder. There has to be a way to break free. You said you're bound here too. If you know something, tell me. What did you mean by the game has only just begun? The woman's smile faded, replaced by a cold, calculating look. Very well, she replied. If you wish to play, then you must learn the rules. But remember, knowledge comes at a price. She lifted her hand, and the shadows around her began to writhe and twist, forming a circle that hovered in the air. Three tasks, she said, her eyes never leaving his. Complete them, and you may find a way out of this place. Fail, and the forest will consume you, body and soul. Jonathan's heart pounded in his chest as he listened. Three tasks. It was a glimmer of hope, a chance to end this nightmare. What are the tasks? He asked cautiously, bracing himself for whatever horror she might throw at him. The woman's gaze grew distant, as if peering into a world beyond the forest. The first task, she intoned, is to find the heart of the forest. It is hidden deep within these woods, guarded by shadows and illusions. Only the brave can see it for what it truly is. She paused, her eyes flicking back to Jonathan's. The second task is to confront the past, she continued, her voice growing sharper. This forest is a reflection of your fears and regrets. You must face them, embrace them, if you wish to proceed. Jonathan swallowed hard, a knot of dread forming in his stomach. The forest had already shown him glimpses of his darkest fears, twisted visions that clawed at his sanity. To confront them fully, it was a terrifying prospect, but he nodded, refusing to back down. And the third, he asked, his voice steady. The woman's lips curved into a grim smile. The final task, she said, her tone dropping to a whisper, is to sever the chain. This forest binds souls with chains of despair. To break free, you must sever the chain that holds you here and accept what it demands. Her words hung in the air, ominous and cryptic. Jonathan's mind raced as he tried to piece together their meaning. Sever the chain. Was it something literal or metaphorical? The forest was playing with him, offering riddles wrapped in shadows, but at least now he had a path to follow. Fine, he said, taking a deep breath. I'll do it. Where do I start? The woman raised her hand again, and the circle of shadows before her began to glow with an eerie blue light. Follow the road, she instructed. You will know when you are near the heart of the forest, but be warned, the forest will resist you at every turn. It will twist your senses, warp your thoughts, trust nothing you see. Jonathan glanced at the path ahead, the road stretching into the darkness, lined with gnarled, ancient trees. His skin prickled with unease, but he steeled himself. I'll find it, he said firmly, turning his gaze back to the woman. And when I do, you're going to help me break this curse. 
Her eyes darkened, the glowing blue fading to black. We shall see, she murmured, her form dissolving into mist. The shadows around her scattered, retreating into the forest as if they were part of it, leaving Jonathan alone on the road once more. He took a deep breath, the air cold and damp, filling his lungs with the scent of earth and decay. The forest seemed to whisper around him, the leaves rustling in a non-existent breeze, a cacophony of voices murmuring in the dark. He turned toward the road, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and determination. One step at a time, he told himself, starting forward. The road felt different now, heavier, as if the forest itself were pushing back against him. With each step, the air grew colder, the trees more twisted, their branches reaching out like skeletal hands. The path narrowed, becoming a mere trail through the dense undergrowth. Shadows flitted at the edges of his vision, figures that vanished when he turned to look directly at them. He clenched his fists, forcing himself to focus on the road, to ignore the illusions the forest conjured around him. After what felt like hours, he noticed a change in the air. It grew warmer, the oppressive cold lifting slightly. Jonathan paused, glancing around warily. The trees here were different, their bark smooth and silver, glowing faintly in the darkness. A soft, pulsating light emanated from somewhere up ahead. That must be it, he muttered, quickening his pace. He pushed through the undergrowth, branches scraping against his arms as he made his way toward the source of the light. His heart raced, a mixture of hope and dread swirling within him. As he stepped into a small clearing, he stopped, his breath catching in his throat. In the center of the clearing stood a tree unlike any he had ever seen. Its trunk was wide and smooth, glowing with a pale, ethereal light. From its branches hung dozens of glowing orbs, casting a soft, ghostly illumination over the clearing. Jonathan approached cautiously, his eyes fixed on the tree's trunk. Carved into the bark was a symbol, an intricate pattern that seemed to pulse with a life of its own. He reached out, his hand trembling as it neared the symbol. A sudden wave of warmth washed over him, and for a moment the shadows around him seemed to recoil, shrinking away from the light. This is it, he whispered, his fingers brushing the symbol. The warmth surged through him, filling him with a sense of peace and calm. But beneath that warmth he felt something else, something dark and ancient, lurking just beneath the surface. Before he could react, the ground beneath him shifted. Roots shot out from the earth, wrapping around his ankles and pulling him down. Jonathan gasped, struggling against the roots that tightened around his legs like iron chains. The shadows surged back, encircling him, their whispers growing louder and more insistent. No, he yelled, thrashing against the roots. Let me go. The forest responded with a deafening silence, as if it were holding its breath waiting to see if he could overcome its grasp. Jonathan gritted his teeth, reaching out to the symbol on the tree. His fingers dug into the grooves, and he felt a surge of energy course through him. A sudden, blinding light erupted from the tree, blasting outward. The roots recoiled, releasing their grip on him as the shadows shrieked and dissolved into the ground. Jonathan fell back, gasping for breath, his heart racing in his chest. He looked up at the tree, the light slowly fading back to a soft glow. He had found the heart of the forest. The first task was complete. Jonathan sat on the forest floor, his chest heaving as he caught his breath. The clearing around him was still bathed in the soft glow of the tree, the air warm and strangely calming. Despite the ordeal he had just faced, a sense of accomplishment filled him. He had found the heart of the forest. He had passed the first task. But as he sat there, he couldn't shake the feeling that the hardest part was yet to come. The woman's words echoed in his mind. The second task is to confront the past. A knot formed in his stomach as he thought about what that might entail. He had plenty of things in his past that he'd rather not face. But if he was going to break the curse, he had no choice. After a few moments, he forced himself to stand, his legs shaky beneath him. He turned away from the glowing tree, scanning the darkened forest that surrounded the clearing. It seemed quieter now, the shadows less oppressive. Yet he knew the forest was merely biding its time, waiting to see if he could truly overcome what lay ahead. With a deep breath, Jonathan stepped back onto the path. The road stretched out before him, disappearing into the gloom. As he walked, the air grew colder, the trees around him twisting into unnatural shapes, their branches curling like claws. 
He kept his eyes forward, focusing on putting one foot in front of the other, trying to ignore the dread building inside him. Minutes turned into hours as he trudged through the woods, the darkness pressing in on him. His thoughts wandered, drifting to memories he had long buried. His childhood, his family, his failures. He tried to push them away, but they kept creeping back, each memory like a weight on his shoulders. Suddenly, the path widened, leading into a larger, open space. Jonathan slowed, his heart pounding as he looked around. The area was shrouded in mist, the ground covered in a thick layer of dead leaves, and at the center of the clearing stood a figure. Jonathan froze, his breath catching in his throat. The figure was a man, his back turned to Jonathan, standing unnaturally still. The mist swirled around his feet, obscuring his lower body. An uneasy feeling settled in Jonathan's gut as he took a step closer. Who, who are you? He called out, his voice trembling slightly. The figure didn't respond, didn't move. Jonathan swallowed hard, his skin prickling with a growing sense of dread. He knew this was part of the second task. He had to confront whatever, or whoever, this was. Slowly, he approached the figure, his footsteps echoing in the eerie silence of the clearing. As he drew closer, the man began to turn, his movements slow and deliberate. Jonathan stopped, his breath hitching in his throat as the figure faced him. It was his father. Jonathan staggered back, his eyes widening in shock. His father's face was pale, his eyes hollow and dark, his expression one of disappointment. You, his father said, his voice a low, haunting whisper. You failed us. Jonathan's heart sank, a wave of guilt washing over him. No, he muttered, shaking his head. This isn't real. You're not real. The figure took a step toward him, the ground crunching beneath its feet. You left, it continued, its voice growing louder. You ran away when we needed you most. You abandoned your family. Jonathan clenched his fists, his body trembling. Memories flooded his mind, memories he had tried to bury for so long. He remembered the fights, the arguments with his father. He remembered leaving home in anger, cutting ties with the people who had raised him, and then the accident, his father's death. The news had reached him days later, too late for him to say goodbye to make amends. The guilt had eaten away at him for years, a shadow that followed him wherever he went. And now the forest was forcing him to face it, to confront the pain he had tried to ignore. I know I made mistakes, he said, his voice barely a whisper. I know I can't change the past, but... He paused, taking a shaky breath, trying to gather his thoughts. But I can't let this define me. I've been running from it for too long. The figure's eyes bore into his, unyielding. You think acknowledging it will absolve you? It hissed. Your actions have consequences. Your choices brought you here. Jonathan took a step forward, his fear slowly giving way to a surge of anger. Yes, he snapped. I made those choices, and I have to live with them. But I'm not going to let you or this forest control me with my past. The clearing grew colder, the mist swirling around them as the figure glared at him. You can't escape it, it whispered, its voice echoing in the air. It will haunt you, no matter where you go. Jonathan's fists tightened. Maybe, he admitted, his voice steady, but I won't run anymore. I won't let it keep me trapped here. The figure remained still, its face expressionless as it stared at him. Then, slowly, it began to dissolve, the mist swallowing it up until nothing remained. The air around Jonathan grew warmer, the oppressive weight on his chest lifting slightly. He stood there for a moment, his body tense, waiting to see if the forest would throw another ghost from his past at him. But the clearing remained silent, the shadows at its edges receding. He had confronted his past, faced his guilt, and though the pain still lingered, it no longer felt as suffocating. Jonathan let out a shaky breath, his shoulders slumping. The second task was complete. He had faced his fears, his regrets, and had refused to let them control him. But he knew he wasn't done yet. There was still the final task, to sever the chain. He turned back to the path, his mind racing with questions. The forest had forced him to confront his inner demons, had tested his resolve. But what did it mean to sever the chain? What would he have to give up to break free from this place? As he stepped onto the road again, a chill ran down his spine. The forest was not finished with him. It was watching, waiting for him to take the final step. And whatever awaited him next, he would face it head on. He had come this far, and he wasn't about to give up now. The road ahead seemed to stretch endlessly, winding through the darkened forest. Jonathan's heart thudded in his chest, each step echoing in his ears like a drumbeat. The air grew colder as he moved forward, 
the oppressive darkness closing in around him. The trees loomed over the path, their gnarled branches casting twisted shadows that flickered like ghosts in the dim light. He had completed two tasks, but the hardest one lay ahead. The forest had quieted, the whispers fading into an eerie silence. It felt as if the woods were holding their breath, anticipating the moment when Jonathan would reach the final trial. The woman's cryptic words were played in his mind, you must sever the chain. But what chain? What did he need to break to free himself from this nightmare? Jonathan's thoughts spiraled as he walked, questions swirling in his mind. He had confronted his past, faced the pain of his regrets. What more did the forest want from him? His eyes scanned the darkness, searching for any clue, any sign of what lay ahead. And then, in the distance, he saw it. A faint glow pierced through the shadows like a flickering candle flame. Jonathan quickened his pace, his heartbeat accelerating with both fear and hope. As he drew nearer, the glow grew brighter, revealing another clearing up ahead. His breath hitched as he stepped into the open space. At the center of the clearing stood an old, rusted iron gate. It was covered in creeping vines, their thorns glistening in the dim light. Beyond the gate, the darkness was so dense that it felt like a solid wall, impenetrable and foreboding. But it wasn't the gate itself that captured Jonathan's attention. Hanging from the gate was a chain. It was thick, made of links that looked ancient and worn, yet it emitted an unsettling aura, as if it pulsed with a life of its own. The chain extended from the gate into the shadows beyond, disappearing into the void. Jonathan approached cautiously, his eyes fixed on the chain. This must be it, he murmured, his voice barely audible in the stillness of the forest. The chain that binds me here. As he stepped closer, he noticed something else. The chain was not alone. From its links hung small, ghostly figures, their forms hazy and translucent. He squinted, his stomach twisting as he realized what they were, faces. Faces of people he had known, people he had lost or pushed away. His father was there, his expression frozen in a mask of sorrow. Beside him hung the face of an old friend, someone Jonathan had abandoned in his time of need. Guilt surged through Jonathan, clawing at his insides. This chain was a physical manifestation of all the regrets, mistakes, and fears that had haunted him throughout his life. It was the burden he carried, the weight that kept him bound to this cursed place. He reached out, his hand trembling as he touched one of the links. A jolt of energy shot through him, searing and cold. Images flooded his mind, memories of his failures and the pain he had caused. His father's disappointment, the cries of his abandoned friend, the emptiness of the paths he had chosen. The chain glowed brighter, reacting to his touch, tightening its grip on the gate. Jonathan stumbled back, gasping for breath. He felt the forest closing in around him, the shadows whispering in a language he could not understand. They wanted him to give in, to succumb to the despair and guilt that the chain represented. But he refused to back down. He had come this far, and he would see this through. I have to break it, he muttered to himself, his eyes locked on the chain. I have to sever it, once and for all. But how? The chain was no ordinary object. It was made of his regrets, his fears, his failures. To break it, he would have to confront everything it represented and accept it as a part of who he was. Jonathan closed his eyes, taking a deep, steadying breath. I am not perfect, he began, his voice echoing through the clearing. I have made mistakes, I have hurt people, and I have run from my past for too long. The chain rattled, the faces on its links twisting and contorting as if they could hear him. The gate shuddered, the vines around it tightening. Jonathan's chest tightened as the memories surged within him, but he pushed on. But I can't change what has happened, he continued, his voice growing stronger. I can't go back and undo my mistakes. All I can do is accept them and learn from them. The chain's glow flickered, its pulsing aura growing fainter. Jonathan stepped forward, reaching out again. This time, his hand did not tremble. He grasped the chain, feeling its cold, metallic surface beneath his fingers. I accept my past, he said firmly. I accept my failures, my regrets, my fears. They are a part of me, but they do not define me. I am more than the mistakes I've made. The chain shuddered violently in his grip the faces on its links distorting, their expressions shifting from anger to sorrow to peace. Jonathan tightened his hold, his heart pounding as he focused all his resolve on this final act. I sever this chain, he declared, his voice ringing out with a power that resonated through the forest. 
I break free from the guilt and fear that bind me. With a final surge of energy, he yanked on the chain. A blinding light erupted from its links, filling the clearing with a brilliant, searing glow. Jonathan cried out as the chain disintegrated in his grasp, the metal turning to dust that scattered into the air. The gate creaked open, the vines retreating, hey, the darkness beyond it dissipating like smoke in the wind. Jonathan fell to his knees, gasping for breath. The light faded, leaving the clearing bathed in a soft, warm glow. He looked up at the gate, now standing open and free of the chain that had bound it. The faces that had hung from the links were gone, their presence lifted. He had done it. He had severed the chain. Slowly, he pushed himself to his feet, his legs shaky but steady. The forest around him felt different now, lighter, less oppressive. The shadows had receded, the whispers silenced. For the first time since he had entered these woods, he felt a sense of peace. Jonathan turned his gaze to the open gate, a path stretching out beyond it into a misty unknown. It was the way out, the way forward. He took a deep breath, the air crisp and cool, filling his lungs with a renewed sense of hope. He stepped through the gate, leaving the clearing behind. The road beyond was narrow, flanked by tall trees whose branches swayed gently in the breeze. As he walked, he glanced back one last time, the clearing fading into the distance. The forest had not beaten him. He had faced his fears, confronted his past, and broken the chains that held him. And now, as he walked the path forward, he knew he was finally free. Jonathan walked along the path, the air around him growing warmer, the forest appearing less sinister than before. The trees no longer seemed to loom menacingly. Instead, they whispered softly in the breeze, as if acknowledging his struggle and his victory. The dense shadows had lightened, giving way to patches of light filtering through the canopy above. He felt an odd mixture of relief and apprehension. <sighs> the gate and the chain were behind him, broken and scattered. Yet a lingering tension hung in the air. He had faced his past and freed himself from its grip, but he was not out of the forest yet. He could sense that one final trial awaited him. The path twisted and turned, winding through the woods, leading him deeper into its heart. A strange fog began to creep in, swirling around his feet as he walked. It thickened, rising until it reached his knees, then his waist, obscuring the path ahead. Jonathan felt his pulse quicken, his senses on high alert. He continued forward, moving cautiously through the mist. The forest grew quiet, an unnatural silence descending over the area. No rustling leaves, no chirping insects, only the sound of his own footsteps crunching on the gravel path. Jonathan's eyes darted around, scanning the shadows for any sign of movement. Then, out of the fog, a shape began to form. A dark silhouette, tall and slender, stood motionless in the middle of the path. Jonathan halted, his heart thudding against his ribs. The figure was human-like, yet its form seemed to waver as though it was part of the fog itself. Who are you? Jonathan called out, his voice firm despite the tension knotting his stomach. The figure remained silent, its head tilting slightly as if observing him. The fog around it thickened, swirling in agitated patterns. Jonathan took a step closer, trying to make out the figure's features. It didn't have a face, just a dark void where its features should have been. And yet, Jonathan felt a strange familiarity emanating from it. The air grew colder as the figure raised a hand, pointing directly at him. Jonathan felt a sudden rush of dizziness, the world around him spinning as memories flooded his mind. He stumbled, clutching his head, as scenes from his past flashed before his eyes. The chain, the faces, the pain he had confronted, it was all coming back. Overwhelming him, no. He gasped, fighting against the torrent of memories, I've already faced this. I've already broken free. The figure moved forward, its form rippling like smoke. It didn't speak, but Jonathan could feel its intentions pressing into his mind. This was different from the previous trials. This presence was darker, more insidious. It wasn't here to test him. It was here to consume him. Jonathan forced himself to stand upright, planting his feet firmly on the path. I won't let you take me, he said through gritted teeth. I've come too far to fall now. The figure stopped, its form swaying slightly. Then, in a voice that seemed to echo from every direction, it spoke. You have severed the chain, it whispered, the sound like dry leaves rustling in the wind. But shadows do not disappear. They linger, waiting for a moment of weakness. Jonathan's jaw tightened. I know, he replied, his voice steady. But I won't let them control me. 
The figure tilted its head again, a wave of cold air washing over Jonathan. You carry the shadows within you, it continued. They are part of you, just as the light is. To escape this forest, you must accept them both. Jonathan's mind raced. Accept both? He had fought so hard to free himself from his past, to break the chains of guilt and regret. And now this figure was telling him to embrace the darkness within him? It didn't make sense. The figure moved closer, its shape shifting like a wisp of smoke in the fog. You cannot sever what is within, it hissed. You must become whole or be lost forever. Jonathan took a deep breath, his eyes fixed on the figure. He knew this was the final task, the final barrier standing between him and his freedom. The forest had forced him to face his fears, his regrets, and to accept his past. Now it was asking him to accept something deeper, the darkness that resided within himself. I see, he murmured, his gaze steady. You're not an enemy. You're a part of me. The figure remained silent, but the air around it seemed to still. Jonathan's mind cleared as he realized what he had to do. He had spent so much of his life fighting his inner darkness, denying his fears and running from his mistakes. But those shadows were as much a part of him as his hopes and dreams. He couldn't banish them. He had to accept them. He stepped forward, closing the gap between himself and the shadowy figure. It stood there, unmoving, as Jonathan reached out a hand. His fingers hovered over the dark void that was the figure's face, hesitation flickering within him for a brief moment. Then, with a deep breath, he pressed his palm against it. A surge of cold rushed through him, and for a moment, everything went black. He felt the weight of his fears, his regrets, the darkness he had buried within himself. But instead of fighting it, he embraced it. He let it wash over him, flowing through every part of his being. The darkness did not overpower him. Instead, it melded with his light, balancing within him. The figure began to dissolve, its form turning to mist that swirled around him, then faded in into nothingness. The fog on the path lifted, revealing the forest bathed in a soft, warm light. Jonathan exhaled, his body trembling. He felt different, lighter, yet whole. The shadows within him had not vanished, but they no longer loomed over him. They were a part of who he was, just as his strength, his resilience, and his hope were. He looked around, the forest no longer appearing menacing. It had transformed, becoming a place of quiet peace. The path before him stretched into the distance, clear and inviting. He had passed the final test. He had accepted every part of himself, the light and the darkness. With newfound resolve, Jonathan took his first step forward. The road ahead was uncertain, but he was no longer afraid. He was free, not from his past or his shadows, but from the fear that had once held him captive. The forest whispered as he walked, its voice no longer one of malice, but of quiet acceptance. He had severed the chains, faced his darkness, and emerged whole. And now, he could finally leave this place behind. As he moved down the path, the light grew brighter and the forest began to fade into the distance. He walked with his head held high, ready to face whatever lay beyond. The path ahead felt endless, yet Jonathan continued forward with a new sense of purpose. His steps were steady, his gaze fixed on the horizon where the forest seemed to thin, giving way to an open expanse of light. The transformation he felt within himself was profound. The darkness had not left him. It had become a companion, a reminder of his journey and the strength it had forged within him. As he walked, the whispers of the forest softened into echoes, gentle and almost soothing. He had been so caught up in the fear and tension that the change in atmosphere now felt surreal. The ominous presence that had lurked in every shadow was gone. The woods around him seemed to breathe in rhythm with his steps, their silence a sign of respect respect for what he had accomplished. Minutes turned into hours as Jonathan trekked deeper into the lightning forest. The trees, once twisted and gnarled, now stood tall and serene, their leaves rustling softly in a breeze that carried a hint of warmth. The path widened, and the fog that had cloaked his way earlier began to dissipate entirely, revealing a clear sky above. Yet amid this newfound tranquility, he couldn't shake the feeling that something still lingered. A presence. Not malevolent, but watchful. He slowed his pace, his eyes scanning the treetops, the undergrowth, and the path ahead. There was something he had missed, one final piece of the puzzle that the forest held. Jonathan stopped and closed his eyes, taking a deep breath. The air was fresh, free of the decay and rot that had once permeated the woods. He focused, allowing himself to become attuned to the forest's subtle energies. The faint whispers returned, echoing through the trees, but this time they carried a different tone. 
They were not accusing or sorrowful. They were curious. What are you trying to tell me? Jonathan asked aloud, his voice barely more than a whisper. Silence answered him at first. Then the forest stirred. The leaves rustled as if in response, and he felt a faint tug at his heart. It was a feeling of longing, an unfinished business that gnawed at the edges of his consciousness. Jonathan opened his eyes and turned, scanning the woods until he noticed a faint glimmer among the trees, a familiar glow emanating from deep within the forest. His heart skipped a beat. The glow was identical to the one that had led him to the chain at the gate. Could there still be another trial left? Or was this something else entirely? Jonathan hesitated only for a moment before he stepped off the path, moving toward the light. The forest around him remained calm, the underbrush parting easily as he made his way forward. As he approached, the glow intensified, revealing a small, secluded clearing bathed in a golden hue. At the center of the clearing stood a lone tree, ancient and weathered, its bark etched with intricate patterns that seemed to pulse with a life of their own. And at the base of the tree, he saw her, the woman who had haunted his journey through the forest. She was not shrouded in darkness this time. Instead, she stood in the soft light, her face serene, her eyes reflecting a mixture of sadness and acceptance. Her once tattered dress now flowed around her like mist, and her hair moved gently in the breeze as though it were part of the forest itself. You, Jonathan breathed, his chest tightening. This was the presence he had felt, the final echo that lingered in the forest. The woman regarded him with a calm gaze, her eyes piercing yet kind. You have come far, she said, her voice carrying the sound of rustling leaves. You have faced your fears and broken your chains, but there is one last truth you must accept. Jonathan felt a chill run through him. What truth? he asked, though a part of him already suspected the answer. The woman gestured to the tree behind her. This forest was born of your soul, she said, her voice steady. Every shadow, every trial, every ghost was a reflection of the darkness within you, and I am the guardian of that darkness. He swallowed hard, the realization settling over him like a cold mist. This forest was not a physical place. It was a manifestation of his own mind, a labyrinth of his deepest fears, regrets, and sorrows, and the woman before him, she was a part of him, the keeper of his inner turmoil. You, he whispered, his voice shaky. You've been guiding me through all of this. You wanted me to face it all. She nodded, a faint, bittersweet smile on her lips. Yes, to escape this place, you had to confront every piece of your past, every fear you had buried. Only then could you break free. But to leave, you must accept me as well. Jonathan took a shaky breath, his emotions roiling inside him. He had come so far, fought so hard to overcome his inner demons, and now here he stood, facing the embodiment of his own darkness, the final obstacle to his freedom. Accept you, he repeated, a mixture of confusion and resolve in his voice. You mean, I have to accept the darkness within myself? The woman inclined her head slightly. You have severed the chains, but the darkness will always be a part of you. To be free is not to destroy it, but to accept it. Embrace it as you would your light. Jonathan felt a surge of emotions, fear, sadness, but also understanding. He had spent so long running from his own shadows, trying to bury them deep within his subconscious. Uh, but in doing so, he had only given them power over him. Now, standing here, he realized that true freedom didn't lie in banishing the darkness. It lay in embracing it as a part of his whole self. With a deep breath, he stepped forward, closing the distance between himself and the woman. She watched him with an unreadable expression, her eyes reflecting the light of the clearing. Jonathan reached out, his hand trembling, and placed it on her shoulder. I accept you, he said, his voice breaking slightly. You are a part of me, and I accept that. A warmth spread through him as the woman's form began to dissolve into light. She did not vanish in a burst of energy. Rather, she merged with the glow of the clearing, becoming one with the forest around them. The tree behind her shimmered, its bark glowing with an inner fire, casting a soft light that enveloped Jonathan. The forest changed. The trees around the clearing shifted, their branches reaching upward as if in celebration. The shadows melted away, replaced by a serene calmness that settled over the woods. The echoes faded, leaving only the sound of the wind rustling through the leaves. Jonathan felt a weight lift from his shoulders, a lightness he had never known before. He turned, finding that the path he had walked had changed as well. 
It was now a wide, open road leading out of the forest, its end bathed in golden light. He took a step forward, then another, feeling the ground solid beneath his feet. The forest was not a place of terror anymore. It was a part of him, a reflection of his inner self, both light and dark. As he walked down the path, he glanced back one last time. The clearing remained, the ancient tree standing tall, its branches swaying in the breeze. The forest had transformed, but it had not vanished. It was still there, always a part of him. Jonathan turned back to the road ahead, his heart lighter than it had ever been. He continued forward, stepping out of the woods and into the light beyond. The golden light enveloped Jonathan as he stepped out of the forest's edge, leaving behind the darkness and trials that had held him captive. The warmth washed over him, a stark contrast to the cold and fear he had faced within the woods. As he walked, the landscape ahead began to take shape, a vast open meadow bathed in the glow of the rising sun. He paused, turning back to gaze at the forest one last time. Its once foreboding presence now seemed peaceful, like a guardian standing silently in the distance, the twisted trees that had lined his path, the shadows that had clawed at his mind, all appeared to have softened in the new light. They were no longer a threat, but a part of his journey, a part of himself. Jonathan took a deep breath, filling his lungs with the fresh air of the open world. He felt different, lighter, yet more grounded than ever. The forest had tested him, pushed him to confront the deepest recesses of his mind, and in doing so, it had forced him to embrace every piece of his being. Now, he stood at the threshold of a new beginning, freed from the chains of his past. As he started to walk forward, a soft, rustling sound caught his attention. He turned slowly, his gaze settling on the forest's edge where he had just emerged. There, standing amidst the trees, was a faint figure. At first, he thought it was a trick of the light, but as the shape grew clearer, he recognized her, the woman, the guardian of his darkness. She stood quietly, her form bathed in the soft glow of the morning. Her expression was calm, almost serene, as she watched him. There was no malice, no sorrow, just an acceptance that mirrored his own. It was as though she was bidding him farewell, acknowledging his passage through the trials and the acceptance he had found. Jonathan felt a pang of sadness mixed with gratitude. This was not just a figure haunting him. She was a part of his soul, the keeper of his darkest secrets and fears. And now, she was letting him go. He raised a hand in a silent gesture of thanks, a small smile tugging at the corners of his lips. She nodded in return, her form growing fainter, blending with the forest until she disappeared entirely. He turned back to the meadow, the path before him clear and bright. There was still uncertainty in what lay ahead, but the fear that had once paralyzed him was gone. He had faced his own darkness and emerged stronger for it. Jonathan walked forward, his steps steady and purposeful. The sun climbed higher in the sky, casting a golden hue across the field, illuminating a new world waiting to be explored. Each step felt like a release, a shedding of the weight he had carried for so long. The forest was behind him, and with it the shadows that had chased him throughout his life. As he moved farther into the meadow, a breeze swept through the tall grass, carrying with it the scent of fresh earth and blooming flowers. The sensation was almost overwhelming, a stark reminder of the beauty that had been hidden beneath the layers of darkness he had traversed. The world was not just shadows and fear, it was also filled with light and possibility. Jonathan closed his eyes for a moment, letting the wind brush against his face, savoring the moment of peace. He was free, not because the darkness had been banished, but because he had learned to accept it as a part of who he was. The forest, the woman, the trials, they were all facets of his inner self. And now, he carried them within him, not as burdens, but as pieces of a whole. The path ahead stretched onward, leading toward the horizon where the sun met the earth in a blaze of colors. It was a path of uncertainty, yes, but also one of hope. Jonathan knew he would face challenges again. The darkness would whisper from time to time, as it always had. But now, he was no longer afraid. He had the strength to face whatever lay ahead, the courage to embrace both the light and the shadows within. As he walked into the open world, leaving the forest behind, he felt a quiet sense of closure. The echoes of the past were no longer chains binding him. They were lessons, memories, parts of the journey that had shaped him into who he was. The forest would remain a place within his soul, but it no longer held power over him. It was simply a chapter in his story, one he had completed. 
The wind whispered through the meadow, a soft, reassuring sound. Jonathan smiled as he took his final steps forward, ready to face the future with a newfound sense of freedom. The forest was behind him, the darkness accepted, and the path ahead was his to choose. He exhaled deeply, a breath that felt like a release of years of tension. The journey through the forest had ended, but his story was just beginning. And with that thought, he took his final step out of the forest's shadow into the light of a new day.